It was when I picked up my first snowboard at 10 that I was like, I really want to become a pro snowboarder, become the best in the world and, and go to the Olympics. She's the actual world champion. The Olympic is the second chance to, to be on the podium. When you have an injury like that, it was quite devastating for all of us. So I'm going to Switzerland for the first training camp of the season. Beijing is in February. Like, I only want to win one thing, and that's a gold medal at the Games. Okay. So this is Tiger Lily. And then this is Captain Jack. And that's the mum and that's the son. Five times a day. <laughs> it's your son. <laughs> this goes for about half an hour, so I'll be able to do my bike session and then come back and he'll probably be just finishing up. I hate the cold, uh, which is quite funny with being a snowboarder. I like being somewhere warm. So the beauty about being in Australia is that I kind of want to feel that sun before I get back into it again. I need to emotionally prepare myself for this shit that hurts all the time. As part of you know being a snowboarder, there's a lot of things that go off slope throughout the year. Like we spend probably 30, 40 days on snow, but the rest of it's in the gym. Come on, Belle. Cardio fitness, your explosivity, your action time, training, football training, you know, trying to get that body awareness up. The first time I met her, her work ethic was very much second to none. You could see the drive in her um, and the commitment to try and improve every single day. Good Seth. I like to win and I like getting medals and going fast and beating everyone, like that's just my nature. That's all I want to do, so I naturally just keep going and I just find the balance as best as possible. You see yeah. this kind of move? That, that creates nothing here. Yeah. She's one of the best snowboarder I have ever seen. It's, it's natural for her. My family's had a very rich history in winter sports in Australia. My great aunt, Joyce Brockoff, was a Australian champion skier and she had a lot to do with getting women into skiing. And Peter Brockoff, my great uncle, he went to the Olympic Games twice in the 1960s. And because of that, I pretty much got thrown onto skis when I was three years old. And then when I was nine years old, my mum started snowboarding. And I got so jealous that I wanted to start snowboarding. I also got thrown into racing when I was 10. Whatever she could throw herself at, she gave it her all and her best. She was very ballsy. Yeah, I just enjoy going fast and, and it's quite a high adrenaline sport. So I'm a two-time Olympian. From my first Olympic Games when I was 21 to now when I'm 28, like there's so much growth in there, you know, and a lot of things have happened during that time. In 2017, I was 11 months out from the Games in Pyeongchang, 2018, and I ended up having a crash. Uh, at that point, I said, OK, well, I have to make a decision. Do you have a crack? Like, is that even possible to, to race without an ACL, or do you just come back and throw the whole thing in the bin? I want to give it a red-hot go, and um, that's what I did. The rehab for me was really dry. It was five times a day, seven days a week. I came back four months later on snow, did like the first run, which was really scary for me. On course, Bell fourth, really bad start. What if my knee re ruptures itself or a crash or whatever, you know? Bell's third. I was just literally just taking one run at a time, not thinking too much of the bigger picture just yet. Coming, kicker, Bell in the lead, two boards. I felt better and better, and then I just kind of built up from there. I felt really good. And then. And that was two months out from the games. That kind of hit us really hard. Oh my God, your breath stinks. 
I guess every athlete kind of questions, you know, whether they want to stick to the sport, how long or whatever, or, you know, when they have major setbacks, it's like, oh my God, like maybe I'm not good enough. Mental health, I think it's really important. Yeah. Morning. My sports psych, Stacey, she's based in the States, but we do have regular video chats and we just talk about the stuff that I need to work on. Like, what are you most looking forward to? Oh, just getting back in the track again, really. Yeah. Like, you know, I had that injury and so I missed out on the back end of the season, but, um, all the work over the last two years kind of carry over into this. Like a big win. Yeah. From 2017 till 2021, it's taken me a long time to get that confidence back in myself and, and as an athlete and how I do things. You know, even now, like with COVID and just, you know, different lockdowns and the restrictions, I stay inside all the time and then just it would just be a compounding effect of, of depression and it's horrible. You can see like a lot of people were at breaking point or beyond it like yeah. have given it yeah. them all. Yeah. COVID you know has given me a lot of time to reflect quite a bit on that part of my life and does help catching up with your family, taking your focus off yourself. When is it enough parmesan? It's never enough parmesan. <laughs> <laughs> I went through depression and I went through anxiety to a point where like, you know, I was, I was, I started to self-harm and I also started thinking of ways how to take my own life. Um, and that's where I owe a lot to my snowboarding because that was the one thing that gave me a lot of peace and a lot of happiness. What do you want? If you let your vulnerability and fears kind of take control of your life, that's, that's not good. So even though I, I had a gnarly crash, if, if I didn't compete at the games, I would have regretted it. You can either take it as an opportunity to better yourself or you can just throw on the towel. You know, I had my knee brace, I had everything kind of physio taped up. The goal went from a gold medal at the games to like, okay, let's see what my body and mind can do. From there, like, you know, I was able to back up that momentum once again um, in training. And even though my body feels powerful and strong, um, the mental side of things is really the make or break. At the World Champs this year, I did have another crash. I just went a bit too hard and you can actually see my head fold over front and then back. And then on the second impact, that's where I knocked myself out. And I, I knew I broke my wrist. Um, I have a big plate in here. But even though I, I had another crash and I knocked myself out and I broke my wrist, this time I can cope with that. I was still able to back up that mentality that I had and that was a really big win for me. So I'm going to Switzerland for the first training camp of the season um, prior to the, to the Olympics. Race jersey, really cool. Um, and this one's got my name on it, which is nice. A little personal touch. My body armour. And this is really cool stuff, actually. Um, it hardens on impact. Really important, um, especially when you're going high speed and you're doing crashes like, like the one we saw. So that's um, one quarter of what I pack. <laughs> I'm looking forward to Switzerland because, you know, there's, there's not many restrictions over there. We can go out, we can go to different restaurants and whatnot. Plus I get to snowboard, so that's always a win. Suspay has a really good track, so plus all the teams are here and we can do heats together and just kind of figure out where we're at and what we need to work on, so. It's just taking everything in, really, and getting used to it all. Yeah, right now we've had a fresh dusting of snow, so it's a little bit sno slow. Um, but it is speeding up just a fraction as we ride through it. Um, 
I've been the only female on the team for a very long time, my whole snowboard cross career. It's not normal snow. So it's cool that Josie Baff and Mia Clift have been on the team with us and trained together with us. Um, it's the first time I've actually had a group of females on the team with me. Rank one perfect, coming to the, to the jump, a little bit friendly. For many years she was alone with the boys team. Now there is two young girls. It's going really well for her. She, she likes to also give her knowledge. How's your, um, your whack skills? Oh, not bad. You know what whack is? No. You whack it in the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Josie and I both have someone to look up to, which is super helpful because Belle didn't really have that. She paved the way. So she's been through it all and can give us tips and when we don't know what to do and stuff. They both know I'm there for them and I've expressed it to them that I'm here at their disposal. Vegemite, every Australian travels with it. <laughs> Almost anyway. Is this one? Beijing is in February and got the media attention, it's exciting. Like you watch your, your social media go up in followers. Like there's a lot of all these things that you haven't like mm. experienced before. Mm. It's exciting, it's fun. You know, I didn't have another female on the team to give me those tips and everything. Having that would have been something quite special. Beijing, uh, like any games, it's, it's, it's the Olympics. Uh, there's a lot of media hype around it. Uh, there's a lot of expectation, there's a lot of pressure. Like, I only want to win one thing, and that's a gold medal at the games. She's got the level, she's got the background, the knowledge, she's been on the podium, she won World Cups. She, she's been lucky enough to taste what is victory. Snowboarding, I could probably say that saved my life. And sharing my story, I hope people see it as, okay, well, she's obviously achieved this much and she's obviously gone through a lot of things and that's, that's quite normal. If it helps one person by me exposing myself like that, then I'm doing my job right.